Good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday Wisdom and it's Elizabeth Eleanor and we're here with the beautiful Jody Jewess. Uh, Jody and I, actually, I did um, Mind Body Spirit Festival in Sydney this year um, and I actually, uh, you know, you're walking through the stalls and checking them out and I came across Jody's stall and I just had to reach out and ask her if she would do um, an interview with me on Wednesday Wisdom because I love uh, finding, you know, new, quirky, you know, um, authentic people that are doing amazing stuff. And Jody is definitely one of them. We had a bit of a chat. So, Jody, you um, work with herbs and calendula, and I'm, I'm going to leave it to you to share what it is that you create because I'd love to. Um, I love to share it with our community. Okay. So I grow calendula flowers on a little property at Seahampton, which is a little hamlet in the Hunter Valley. And we grow the flowers, we infuse them in oil and take this, it's about a seven month process from the seed to the pot. Um, and then it took me about a year, but I developed a salve that not only heals eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, or not so much psoriasis, but it will alleviate the symptoms, rosacea, uh, everything and anything, all the nasty things that can go wrong with your skin, but it's still gentle enough to put on your babies for nappy rash, cradle cap. It's just a beautiful product. It's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, probably thousands. I've traced it back to the year 1200 with ah. Richard Cross, but it, I'm sure it goes way beyond that. Um, um, so, so 1200. Where, where did, um, where it was that originated? Mediterranean. So the flower originated um, around Italy in that area. Okay, it was up there. It's very easy to grow. It self seeds, but you have to have the correct one. There's a few different types. So the one I use is officinalis, and it's just I call it the smart cell because if you've got a bruise. It knows what to do with the bruise. If you've got eczema, it knows what to do with the eczema. If you've got a cut, it knows what to do with the cut. It just knows. It just fixes everything. And it yeah. soothes on the skin, um, visibly shows signs. I had a lady send me a review the other day. She said three days, a visible sign with her daughter with severe eczema, three weeks completely gone. Wow. So that's after using anything and everything that she could get her hands on from chemists, doctors and everything else. So it really has amazing um, healing abilities. They used to use it pre-antibiotic to stop yeah. infection. So you can drink it as well. You can drink it as a tea. So it has benefits for fatty liver, uh, women with endometriosis, um, oh, lots and lots. Like It's anti-inflammatory um, for the inside. It also detoxes you. It's great if you have edema, like swelling of the feet, things like that. You're holding fluids. Just lots and lots of different uses. Um, so so I, I've got heaps to ask you. Like I've got a couple of questions in my head, but one of them, um, one of them, I I do essential oils, right? And so um, hence, you know, you can yes, see. Yes, I spotted like, those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so... Um, one of the things I know about um, essential oils is, and all the herbs, right, is actually getting the right species for the action required, right? So you were saying that you use a particular species. How many, right. do you know how many species of calendula there actually are? Uh, that's one thing I've never really looked into. I know I've only ever seen two types okay. so in Australia anyway. Yeah. Um, there's one that looks like a a plain little daisy, which can be either yellow or orange. You don't know what you're going to get. They they also um, make up their mind when they start to flower. So I might ah. have 99. I might plant 100 plants and get 99 orange and one orange and one yellow. Yeah, right. And then next year I might plant 100 and I'll get 80 yellow and 20 orange. They just do whatever they want to do, really. Yeah, so they're funny little plants. Um, but majority of them usually is orange. Yeah. So, they're uh, such the a beautiful looking plant, is... aren't they? Sorry? They're, they're, such, they're such a beautiful looking flower. They they're are. so and delicate. They have to smile just looking at them. Yeah. They're such a pretty little plant. I didn't even think to pick one. Um, coming to the end of this crop, they're a little bit um, small at the moment. 
So uh, can I just jump up for a sec? I'll grab some dried ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone wants to have a look? Yeah, sure. So here's the so do, you see, do you sell, um, are they so, like they're so vibrant, aren't they, even they as are. dried? They but are. when when you see them live, they're so orange, aren't they? They they're are. They're absolutely a, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, the dried ones don't do them justice. Yeah. They're so beautiful. So um, do you actually sell the tea as well? Are you make I do. Them up I make up tea? some. I, I have made up some tea bags in the past. Yeah. Uh, but now I just use infusers. So okay. um, yeah. Just, yeah. just push the petals in and and I usually for me personally, because they're not the nicest tasting tea, they're not like a nice, you know, uh, chamomile or tea or anything. Yeah, or red, yeah, red, no, red, nothing or... like that, but the benefits of it is worthwhile. So yeah. how I have it is I have the green tea, like a green tea tea bag. I inf with an infuser with the the petals or the whole flower, whatever you like. Um, and then I just have that in hot water with a little bit of lemon and honey and yeah. that takes away because it's a little bit like horse food, you know, that yeah. sort of grassy, yeah. grassy. But, you know, if you've got taste, inflammation yeah. and you've got something going on, you know, yeah. like they're the sort of things and you know something's going to work, right? So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, I was and in if, hospital for a total hip replacement. They said four to five days um, before I was discharged. I drank four cups of this a day. Morning, noon, like morning, first thing, morning, and then afternoon, and then in the evening, and I was out in two. Yeah, so wow. Everything just, they just said, it's just, you're ready to go. You know, they yeah. just, you know, we can't do anything more for you, you can go. So that was pretty good. That's then, awesome. Yeah, it helps with my thyroid, I think, too. Like, you get a lot of side effects from thyroid dysfunction. I don't have one anymore, so I have a lot of weight problems, a lot of fluid problems. So, but it definitely helps. It makes me, it changes my day. If I start with calendula and green tea, it changes my day. So yeah. It's so much better. And and it's really interesting, isn't it, when you've got a plant, you know, you were saying about the the intelligence of the plant, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I know. When you've got something that's really pure and it hasn't been tainted and adulterated and all that sort of stuff, the essence, the you know, the intelligence of the plant, the the vibration of the, um, you know, the spirit of the plant can actually do what it's what it's required to do, you know. And it goes in and it checks out what's going on. You might have put it on your skin for eczema, but you know, it might be doing something else, you know, with your liver or which you absolutely. know, liver and eczema work together anyway. Yeah, but, absolutely, because a lot yeah. of things taken in through the skin actually end up in your major organs. Yeah, in your bloodstream. So all those, and all they'll do with eczema, dermatitis, even for little babies, all they do is give steroids and cortisone yeah. cream, which are just yeah. awful. I met a little boy yesterday, and I was shocked at how bad he is with eczema, uh, from head to toe. He's five months old, absolutely covered in eczema. Um, so we started the salve yesterday. I said, just put it on him from head to toe, morning and night, and. We'll go back in three days. That was yesterday, so we'll go back in three days and see how he's looking. But yeah. it will definitely help him. I know it will. I've seen little yeah. girls with the same. I had there was a little girl not so long ago. She just had the same sort of thing, but only on a leg. So, and then I saw a three. Oh, it was last week, so it was two weeks after her first jar, and she had a little bodysuit on with her legs out, and you would never know. You'd yeah, never right. know she had. Her mother was just almost crying. So, yeah, she's wrapped. Because it can be so yeah. debilitating, right? Like eczema oh, and those things. Horrible. Like the skins. Yeah. 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 This mother yesterday, the little boy, she has to cut his nails every day so that he doesn't rip himself open, you know, because he scratches at yeah, it. it. Yeah. Um, and he's only young too, so he doesn't understand the concept of scratching. So once he gets older and he really has his motor skills going, then he could really do some damage. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so we've got to get on top of it now. Yeah. But yeah, and he's so such you, a I, I remember we actually got some soap from you, a little, um, a little bee-looking thing. Yeah, it was very little cute. Little bee, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I do so the soaps as well. Yeah, so you do soap, tea, and um, and the and salve, the and I do and the oils oil. as well. But I'd sold out when I at the mind, body, and spirit. I didn't have many. Um, don't know why I didn't take more. Just didn't really. 
yeah, I didn't realize how many people like the oils more than the salve. So, because I personally love the salve. Yeah. But, uh, the salve, the oil's really good if people that have eczema, dermatitis in their hair. So, yeah. or they're vegans because I do use lanolin and beeswax. Yeah. So, um, they can still get it and it's, it's pure. It's just infused in apricot kernel oil. So, and it is beautiful. So, um, it, I think it's as good as a hobo oil. Yeah, got, yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. And yeah. so um, you were just telling me a little bit about the flower and the species and where they come from before we jumped on. Yeah. Uh, you were saying that that calendula, yeah, I actually thought it was a marigold. No, and there's a lot of misconception about that. Yeah. It's actually part of the Asteraceae family, which is a daisy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, and that's, that's 100% true. A lot of people think they're marigolds. They are not. Yeah. So I've had people say, I'm allergic to marigolds. I can't use it. And I said, but it's not, you know, it's fine and they're fine. So, yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's interesting, different types of flat, you know, like the same. I was really, um, when I found out, oh, you know, I realized that, um, you know, lavender is in the sage family, right? Mm. Like, and you look at it and you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense, right? Because it's got the same sort of flowers and stuff. It's um, It's interesting how. Uh, just the plant species and what they do and how they behave and all of those sort of things, right? So, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah, we can learn a lot from. I mean, when you think about it, big pharmaceutical companies have only been around for a hundred years. Yeah, that's right. You know, when you really think about it, plants have had our backs forever. Yeah, for healing yeah. us and our go-to. Um, you know, well, I mean, you know what's really interesting, um, Jody. I, you know, I've done a little bit of research myself, being into oils the way I am, and um, you know, the pharmaceutical companies when they first started out, they they would, you know, look at a plant and they'd go, ah, oh, so they, you know, put it in their little machines and they'd see this active ingredient that would spike, right? So they'd pull out that constituent and then they'd start playing with it to create a synthetic version of it, right? Then we've yeah. got aspirin, we've got all these, these yeah. you know, pharmaceutical drugs. But because of that spike, that one, one spike and it being active, if you haven't got the rest of the plant with it, um, it's causing, that's where the side effects come in, right? Because it, the, it's no longer a natural product. But one of the things that um, I was listening to a scientist talk, you know, a biologist talk, and he said, who's to say that all those little tiny spikes before the big spike and after the big spike aren't actually part of the process of that being exactly. an Exactly, just as important. Yeah, just yeah. as important. Yeah. So it's exactly So when right. you've got that whole species, you know, you've got that yeah. whole, all those constituents that are in the plant, I mean, nature knows what it's doing, right? It like, does, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so we were and blessed as humans. I believe plants have a conscience. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Like I worked in bush regen for many, many years and we used to go out and kill weeds you know for the bush you know we were yeah. we we're looking after the bush yeah but at the same time um and and the way the bush responds to us removing those weeds is amazing like yeah. we rarely had to plant anything it would just come back everything just came back the seeds yeah. are waiting to go they're sitting there ready to go they just need those things to go That's important yeah yeah and they and the weeds are so successful in our country we have the perfect weather though but some of them actually put a toxin in the ground so only they can germinate. Only their seeds will germinate. Isn't it? Like there's so the, the intelligence, removed, right? That comes the bush. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, you know, like the intelligence of plants is it's, it's a community just like we have a community, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. They all have a symbiotic relationship underneath the soil. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of times when people, if you're a gardener, you'll see a lot of times where it looks like a fungus growing underneath the soil around the roots and things like that. That's just a symbiotic relationship that those two things work together to make yeah. each other better. If you've yeah. got a big giant gum tree sitting in the middle of a paddock all by itself with no nothing but grass around it, if it's lucky it's got grass, I can guarantee that tree is dying because it yeah. needs it needs like the mid-story or it needs a ground cover of something else around it to, work to support with, it yeah, for it to the be community yeah that's right it needs that community so yeah um yeah it's very sad and you'll see a lot of you, you drive out west you see a lot of 
big old trees and they're just dead, just sitting yeah. there all alone dead, and that's why. It might take yeah. them 10 years to die, but they will die if you yeah. clear it all away from them. It just, shows the, it just shows how much we need community as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's just a, just a representation yeah. of, of yeah. us humans yeah. as well. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And COVID was so hard on a lot of people. Oh, you know, absolutely. Of people, yeah, that don't have family that lived in the home with them. Yeah. You know, so, so shut out. So, so so do you only do you only work with calendula or yeah, do you? Yeah, pretty yeah? much. Pretty much. It's so I decided that I just, it's one thing I'm really passionate about, just the way I've seen it work for people. So I would rather do one thing really well than try and spread myself too thin on other things. So I do have a little thing in the works with some comfrey. A lot of people ask me about pain relief. Yeah. Um, So I'm going to try and do a salve with a little bit of comfrey infused into it. We often find, yeah, you often find calendula with hypericum too in, you know, in when you're, you know, in salves. Um, yeah. Hypericum and and um, calendula. I just remember from when my kids were little, um, that was one of the the things that I used to. My daughter used to get really severe um, mosquito reaction to mosquito yes, yeah. bites. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. and Some I used to do the the two together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do a um. The only other thing I really do other than calendula is a insect repellent called beetle juice. Yeah, and don't tell Disney. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But it's just it's just some essential oils that I've tweaked, and I just have it. It's a water base, so it's excellent for biting insects. I'm um, still working on the midge side of it, but as far as mosquito goes, I haven't had a mosquito bite since I started using it. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, yeah. Lots of yeah, midges are a different, different um, kettle of fish, aren't they? Midges. Oh, uh, yeah. I've got a friend that lives on an island and I said, well, how did you go with it? She said, well, I went okay, but my friend, she said, she just got annihilated even, even with it. She said, but it was a really bad night. And I yeah. said, all right. I said, I'll try and keep tweaking it for the midges. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah. But as far as mosquito goes, and, I mean, that's really our problem. Most people's yeah. problems is yeah. mosquitoes. Um, I've actually watched a mosquito fly at me, get within about six inches, and then must have got a whiff of it, and then thought no, and just fly yeah, away. Off, so, off went. <laughs> yeah, I actually wear it to bed. It's so nice. It smells like a chai latte with the combination ah. of oils. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. So I put it on at bed because you know I lay in bed and I do research and things like that, and so they're attracted to the light. If there's one in the house, it'll find me. And it won't bite me once, it'll bite me 10 times. So, yeah, yeah. But I haven't had a bite since. I tested it in the hills of Karajong with some Bush Region colleagues and we there was five of us. I gave them all a bottle each. We sprayed it before work. We sprayed it after lunch. There's mozzies, ticks, leeches, bull ants, you name it, it's in Karajong. And not one bite in three days. Oh, awesome. So, that's when I said, okay, well, I think we. This I'm recipe, on a winner. Yeah, I've got it. Got the recipe yeah. right. So, like I said, I'm still working on the midges, but, you know, we'll see. They're a yeah. horrible thing. Uh, I, I lived in far north Queensland for 16 years. Yeah. And um, for seven of those, I was living at Holloway's Beach, which is in Cairns itself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like right near the mud flats and everything. So you sort of get used to them. But then I moved up to Atherton Tablelands and totally forgot, you know, like so I a couple of years later I went to Cairns Airport to visit, to, to pick someone up and I was early. So I parked in the parking spot and pulled my window down, totally forgetting, <laughs> like, and you know, like mud flats all over Cairns Airport. Yeah. And um, I watched them come in totally like it wasn't until one of them got me that I remembered like, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I've got this they swarm. Oh, they not swarm. Like the mosquito, lone mosquito that will just come in. They yeah. will swarm, yeah. Yeah. They're and, and, you know, I got scars on my le- on my feet from, from when I first moved up there, right, because <laughs> they can ulcerate from, you know, they, they're nasty little buggers. If you can't, if you don't actually scratch them, in the first, you know, twelve hours or something. If you yeah. if you cannot scratch them, then usually okay. But oh my gosh, they're crazy. So 
Yeah. So keep keep going with that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. so Jody, how can people get it? You've got a website, I'm assuming. I do. Yes. Yeah. So it's just Aussie Bush Girl. Um. Dot myshopify.com and awesome. things on there. I've still got to upload a couple of things. I don't think the insect repellent is pretty new. This is only my first year of actually selling it to the general public. I've been making it my own for about three years, uh, but I've been using it for a, probably three de- going on three decades now. Yeah. Um, but my favourite company, which was, can I use a brand name? Yep, uh, was Thursday Plantation. I love their products. I love their tea trail. Yeah, they sold out to an American company and dropped the line. I heard so, that right when my sister had a melanoma on the base of the foot. Twelve months of um, wound clinic specialists, you name it, they tried to heal the graft that they put in, would not heal. So we'd use the calendula on the skin where they took the graft, so it fixed it pretty much overnight, took away the pain, and just healed it really fast. But we were getting really low on the Thursday plantation calendula. So anyway, I said to her, just, just try it around the edges of the wound because you're not meant to put it on an open wound, like a, a serious open wound. And she just started putting it on the edges and doing um, little Epsom salt baths with it, just running it over the top, just gently dabbing it on. And it still took another year. There was that much damage to a foot. Wow. But I fixed it. It finally fixed it. So she's good, good to go now. She was actually at the festival with me. Oh, so, I remember. Yeah. 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 She was there. So she's my inspiration because I was panicking that we did try and buy a couple of other types. We weren't impressed with them. So that's when I said, all right, well, we've got to do, do it ourselves. Them. Yeah. So we probably had about half a day. Like a little bit goes a long way, especially with my one. Um, so it took about like I said, it's seven months from the seed to the pot. So we just scraped it in, you know, like we just got there in the end and um, had enough to get it through till mine was ready. Yeah. Because so, calendula oh, grows awesome. pretty much all year round. It just doesn't like the really, really hot summers. Yeah. So, yeah, it does thrive in winter, Mediterranean, more Mediterranean um, climate. But, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, just the super hot summers, 40 degree days did not do it. Any, any, I don't think so. what do today agrees. Do anyone, anyone yeah, agree? no, absolutely. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. awesome. So, yeah. so, are you going to be at Mind Body Spirit again, um, in May? Um, I'm not sure. I do have a scheduled sur- uh, surgery for next year. I'm not sure when it's going to be, so I'm not making any plans just yet. Yeah, so, but another friend of mine, she wants us to join forces and go down and do, do one together. Yeah, so, um, if I can give her a little plug. She's uh, Amanda in In Harmony Designs, absolutely beautiful stuff. Yeah, so, In Harmony yep. Designs. Yes. She doesn't do, She's she wasn't the woman that was doing the embroidery. No, she does, uh, it's like timber carvings, oh. sound bowls. She does little mini sound bowls, um, beautiful dream catches or sun catches, I should say. It's very hard to describe it. Uh, they work together, a husband and wife team. You should yeah. look them up. She has absolutely beautiful, um, beautiful products. Awesome. So, yeah. Excellent. A lot of crystals. She does a lot of crystal work. She's on Instagram, does little Monday morning rituals. And, yeah, she's just a beautiful lady, Amanda, and Chris, her husband. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah, they're lovely. So um, for those that are interested, we'll put all the details of uh, the your website and, and any, you know, your socials so that people can follow you and check out what you're doing and where you're going to be. Yep. Um, I definitely will be buying some more um, myself. I'm thinking of mm-hmm. some a little girl that I know that's got eczema on her, um, uh, oh, you know, in the inside. Yeah. Of the it, it amazes me how many kids have it. I know. I was shocked. And it wasn't until I got into markets and actually got out into the general public that I realised just how many people suffer mm. from for me, you know, we're really lucky. I think we have the Mediterranean skin. We're, we're, we're dark-skinned. I'm probably the fairest in my whole family. So uh, we're lucky. We've never really had any of those problems. I've always just used it for wounds and things. But with the eczema, it's just, you know, like every second customer, it's for eczema. So yeah, wow. It's little kids that get it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think just preservatives in food. 
the environment maybe well well i remember one of my things yeah i remember one of my mentors actually saying that children are being born these days with um with toxic livers yeah yeah it does not surprise me at all yeah yeah and it's probably not just from their parents it's probably from their grandparents when they start generational gmo like gmo terrifies me yeah I work with Roundup. Roundup is a horrible, I used to, like when I did Bush Regeneration, we worked with Roundup day in, day out. I hated the stuff, but there yeah. was no alternative. Yeah. So we, um, but to think that our crops are sprayed with Roundup and they've been genetically modified <clears throat> to not die yeah. is quite terrifying, really. It is. I don't know how, how fast Roundup kills things. So yeah. You know, and it's in our food, you know, and even it's, in organic. It's I mean, everywhere. I, I, organic stuff's good, but I still believe it's it's out there, you know. like Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's all over the place, need, right? We're going to need so many years of just not using any of that stuff to get the planet back to the way it was, if ever. Yeah. So, you know, which is quite Well, that's, a, that's another thing that I heard not yeah. long ago, um, someone that, that does channeling, and he said, um, someone asked him, you know, have we got any... Uh, have we got any luck in, you know, can we save the planet? And and he said, um, well, if we all stopped yesterday, then yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Exactly. Too late. We're, we're in the throes yeah. of it. You know, we tried in the, the 90s and 2000s, you know, early 2000s to um, yeah, get people yeah. to be more environmental. And it's but, all about greed. You know, I yeah. really believe the greed is, you know, my nan used to say it when I was a little girl, you know, and she used to say money is the root of all evil. Mm. And I used to think, oh, yeah, you know, like never really thought about it. But, you know, it's always stuck with me that saying. Yeah. And she was spot on, absolutely yeah. spot on. A lady at the market said to me last weekend, why do you sell this so cheap if it's such a good product? And I said, because. It, it covers my costs. It gives me a business that I can survive on. And I said, and I believe that greed is what has destroyed this planet. Mm, so, mm, and, mm. and broke down, you know, so many relationships and communities oh, and, yeah. you know, so I just, you know, I take what I need to take from it and that's it. So, yeah. I mean, I give well a lot done. away. If I think someone needs it, they're more than welcome to have it, you know. Yeah. So it's yeah. not going to break me not going to make me if I you know so um and I know yeah, that's awesome. partner so he's amazing too yeah uh, you know yeah. we work together he's behind the scenes but he, he does a lot too for me so uh, so business. I'm assuming you're on a fair bit of land to create you know no, the not cycle really. of- no not really we have like a quarter acre block okay um, but one flower one plant you'll get a lot of flowers out of yeah. So the main thing with calendula is it needs to have air circulation. So it really didn't like all the rain that we had. So yeah. I had to be, uh, I had to actually, I just use raised garden beds. You know, that's happened everywhere. So yeah. I mean, yeah. pots, drains anything well. Anything that I can stick a calendula plant in has got a calendula plant in it. Yeah. So yeah. We've got brick wall out the front as you come into the driveway and there's two koalas sitting there. With calendula plants sticking out the top. So, you know, yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah oh, that's you get, awesome. Um, you get probably three months of flowering out of one plant. So, you know, yeah. you don't have to have a huge amount. And it is something achievable that people can do at home if yeah. they um, want to have a go at making their oh, own. Oh, they're so beautiful to, to have in the garden, right? And just, yeah, as a cut flower. I have lots of little vases because they're only a short, a short flower. Stem. Yeah. So, but they're beautiful around the house, you know, and I just, I bring them in sometimes, you know, and then have, and then I just pick the tops off and dry them out so they don't go to waste. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Um, and the um, butterflies love them too, right? Yes. Yes. Bees love them. The bush yeah. bees love them. Uh, absolutely love them, bush bees. Uh, butterflies, the white moths, the cabbage moths love them too. So I share them. We share. <laughs> yeah. 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 So they tend- but they don't annihilate your whole crop. So they'll just, you know, they might lay some caterpillars in one or two flowers, so I don't mind that. Yeah. You know, it's all organic. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. You've got you to share things, so. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the best yeah. way to deal with nature, right? Yeah. Try, don't yeah. try and um, uh, take it over and it'll yeah. work with you in harmony. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> lovely to it. have you, Jody. Yes, it's nice been to be here. It's a pleasure talking Elizabeth. to you. 
Yes. And um, anyone that's interested and wants to know more, jump on the links below uh, and um, go and grab some from Jody because it sounds like an amazing product. And I know how much we loved the the little soap that we bought. So um, I think you gifted it to me actually to tell you. Probably, the yeah, I give yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. Take care, Thank everyone. You. Thank Speak you. Soon. See you. Bye.